So folks, what you're gonna see today is an outing that I did with the Virginia Department of Game and Inland Fisheries. And thanks very much to everyone over there. This was, you know, the interview, me going out with them. That's nothing they had to commit to. So thanks very much, y'all. Like I love going out on the boat, electro fishing. It's a blast. And it's, it's a lot of information about these species and their impact and their characteristics that I really want to share with y'all. So I couldn't do that without them. So thanks again to everyone over at Virginia Department of Game and Inland Fisheries. What you're going to see is it's a little alarming. I got to be honest. On well, today's video, I'm in the Rappahannock River. The way they've displaced other species and just their sheer adaptability in terms of what they're able and willing to eat, the conditions they're able to tolerate. If you're looking for a fish to harvest, this is a species to do it. And I'll get into more of that later in the educational part of the series where I take you through that deep dive of the species profile and the impact, their history, where they come from. I'll get into all of that there, but for right now, let's get to this day of just what was a great time out there, electro fishing with Virginia Department of Game and Inland Fisheries. Looks like you heard Aaron say right there, when they first get to the site, after the shocking begins, it does sometimes take a few moments for the fish to come up, but it doesn't take very long. Check this out. Yeah. <laughs> you can hear it in my voice. I'm kind of excited right here. You know, it's a, it's kind of a new experience for me. I'm a fisherman, so I love seeing fish. But, uh, you know, despite the levity in my voice, this biodensity is serious here. I mean, this kind of overabundance, it's something that makes blue catfish a very contentious species. There are some who love them, love to catch them. There's others who really fear the impact that they have had or could have in the future. And we'll get into more of that later, but I just wanted to make that comment. Like I'm laughing, we're having a good time out here, but we really do have a fisheries management issue here to address. And as we get into the blue catfish truth series in my interview with Aaron, I think we have a viable path forward to satisfy all the stakeholders around this incredible species. If there was ever a question how many blue cats are out here, just take a look. Now folks, after we've caught all these fish at these sample sites, then we have to measure them. And goodness gracious, did we have a lot of fish to measure. 27, 19, 31. Nope. I guess he's, there you go. Is he impaled? Yeah, a little bit. Now, folks, you just saw how that one small catfish was actually stuck into the side of this larger catfish. I never thought about it until I was helping measure these fish. But goodness gracious, if you're ever touching a small catfish like that, be careful. Those spines on those small ones are razor sharp. Got it? Yep. All right, let go. Now, the way they divide the effort here is that the skiff, the largest boat, is dedicated to measuring just the largest fish. So you're gonna see him toss this fish over there, and that's why. I'm pretty sure my mucus coating's better than theirs now. Yeah. I don't see any running, that's it. That's it. Boy, oh boy. <laughs> So after we measured those many hundreds, if not thousands of catfish at site one, it was time to go on the site two. And believe it or not, there may have been even more there. <laughs> Now 
Like I said before, their standardized sampling methodology dictates that the large boat, the skiff, handles all of the very large fish, those fish that are 60 centimeters and above. So you can see and hear us signaling to them, hey, <laughs> there's a big one over here. The fisherman, when I see one, is the reach down and touch it with this current in the water, so I'm just gonna hold it off on that. <laughs> Jesus. Now, like I've said before, A, watch out for the small ones, super sharp spines. B, we're going to cover a lot more information about the different species we found and the ones that have been displaced in the actual science communication episodes, the blue catfish truth episodes coming up. But here at this site, I did get to take a picture with a really, really nice one. Now, don't get me wrong. Blue catfish can be over 100 pounds. I think the world record is about 143 pounds. But still, this is a solid fish. All right, here we go. And now it was finally my turn to handle the net. Oh! Hey, hey, hey. All right, try and pay attention now. Now, as you can hear in my voice a little bit, it's not all fun and games up here. You gotta make sure you're handling the net in the right way so that you're not knocking out the guy next to you. And I tell you what, after dipping for a little while, you start getting tired, man. Yep. So maybe five minutes and we're kind of swimming around, getting reoriented. Now, as you just heard from Aaron right there, these fish are getting shot, but within five minutes, they are good to go. These are resilient fish. Uh, pick out whichever one. <laughs> Damn near the same. <laughs> Six ninety four. Well, folks, I hope you enjoyed that video. 
And again, what we're going to be getting into from here is the Blue Catfish Truth Series. And that's going to be where I go with Aaron, who you saw today in the video, and we do a species deep dive on blue catfish and to some degree with flathead catfish. Their history, where they come from, what their impact is, what they eat, how to catch them. We're going to get into all that. So keep an eye out for episode one of Blue Catfish Truth coming out. Let me know if you have any questions or comments. And y'all have a good one.